Christ Church Manchester, welcome to church on a Sunday. Uh, now, it's going to be a bit unusual this week because usually when we do this, we have lots of different people involved in kind of running the meetings. So Anna, Ben and Julia, we've seen Graham, I've seen Dana and lots of other people kind of getting involved in live worship. But this week we're pre-recorded and uh, you've got me and Esther, isn't that right? <laughs> and so we've got Abby helping on camera as well. So anyway, what's going to happen today is you're going to see quite a bit of me, but don't worry because also we have Tim and Sonia leading us some, some worship, um, which I've seen and there are dance moves in it. Uh, so you kids, you're going to really enjoy it. Adults, well, you could really enjoy it as well. We'll see. Um, but if you want to do some dance moves as well, will you do the dance moves? No. No. So let's maybe. hope lots of the kids will, maybe. Maybe. Okay, she's definitely going to do the dance moves. So, yeah, so this morning we're going to worship, we're going to listen to some teaching, and we're going to worship a little bit more, then we'll pray together. So we're going to start off with Tim and Sonia leading us in some worship. Good morning, Gorton. Hope you're ready to worship. First song, we've recorded some actions. We would love for you to join in. I would love, love for you to remember King David, that great worshipper of the Lord, who danced in his underwear in the street. We're not asking you to go outside, but we don't really care what you're wearing right now. We just want you to get up and join in and worship God with us. Jesus Christ, the risk. 
Okay, well, thanks very much, Tim and Sonia. So uh, just before I hand over to me to preach, <laughs> um, yeah, we are just going to you know, talk about a few things first. So uh, hopefully that you, you've seen the CCM Watch Together stuff. So we do encourage you, you can now get people into your house or another household, uh, watch church together, eat together, pray together, maybe have communion together. If that's something you're comfortable with, Please do. If you're not comfortable, don't worry at all. Don't worry about it. But uh, we've been having a few people around. It's been great to just hang out with people a little bit uh, and to kind of spend time together. Um, it's been good fun, hasn't it? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, okay, so what's going to happen now is we're going to hand over to me to preach. Um, but if you are new to Gorton and you, this is your first time watching or you've just kind of started logging on and seeing stuff, then please do drop me an email, tim at ccm.org.uk. We'd love to get in touch with you, help you to feel welcome. Also, usually in kind of normal church Sundays, we take an offering and obviously we can't do that here, but you can still give online. If you want that to be part of your worship, go to christchurchmanchester.com forward slash giving. Um, but Abby's now going to hand over to me as the preacher. Go on, Abs. Over to you, Dad. Good morning, Christchurch Manchester. Great to be with you. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, we live in a strange time in history, right? We live in a, an unusual time. And in these moments, we need to look for the advance of God's kingdom. Actually, in all moments in time, in all the way through history, we need to be looking for what God is doing. But perhaps it comes closer to our minds when there is turmoil and chaos and difficulty around us. Think, OK, we need to look and see what God is doing. Now, at the moment, we may feel that life has been paused. You may feel that for your work life, perhaps uh, family life, even that you've not been able to see relatives as much uh, as you would like or your friendship groups. Community generally has been paused. Even in church life, there is that sense of pause, isn't there? That, OK, well, we're we're locked down a bit to what we can do, but we, we're a bit limited. Uh, and, and that is just part of what it is to be alive at this point in history. And even as lockdown begins to lift, which it is doing, and there are hopes of a return back to normal and are hopes of not getting into a second wave or anything like that, hoping that see, we don't have to go back to that. Uh, but actually, as we do make those steps out, we realise that actually it's still very limited. We've been as a church looking at uh, what it means to gather together physically uh, and realising within the government guidelines that have been put out, what we can do actually is hugely limited. Now, we will do it. We'll make efforts to get um, to meet together publicly and we'll talk about that as we've got plans uh, in due course. Um, but actually, every step we make is a bit limited at the moment. And there is that sense of being paused, being really slowed down, isn't there? And actually, you can just feel like you're just waiting for someone else somewhere to make a decision, which means we can do stuff. And in that time, in that season of that, it's quite easy to just kind of go with the flow of that, to maybe to give up a little bit, to embrace the lack of control, to tap out somewhat. And actually, in the short term, it's inevitable and we have to do it and that's fine. Um, but in the longer term, it's not good for us. It's not good just to be paused. Now, rest is good. Uh, having good holidays, getting time off in the week, having a day or an evening where you can relax and do stuff which kind of brings you back to life again, spend time with people, whatever it might be. That's good. But being paused, being frozen in a moment, waiting for someone or something else, actually to do that for a long time is not good for us. And actually, as we reflect on that, on this moment that we are in, this time we are in, it is important that we look to Jesus. Now you might think, well, Tim, you're a pastor. You've got to say that. and You have to say it. But actually, just think about this for a minute. Jesus, when he showed up in Israel 2,000 years ago, it was an invaded nation, invaded by the Romans. And actually, the Romans were just the latest in a long list of uh, people groups that had swept through Israel at that time. Uh, they were ruled by a corrupt elite as well. Many in Israel felt themselves to be poor, to be powerless, to be voiceless. Okay, living at the whim of the elites. And actually great crowds gathered around Jesus. And part of it was they heard he could produce a lot of food. <laughs> and so there is a genuine, we're hungry, we need to eat. That was the state of the nation at that point. There was a real sense of them being out of control, having any sense of control over their own lives, their own livelihoods. That was the time that Jesus turned up. Now there'd be many nations in the world today that would know what that feels like. 
So I was uh, chatting with Charles just this week and he was talking about Malawi and actually the difficulty that that nation experiences um, just because of the way the economy is constructed, the way uh, that actually there's a lot of subsistence farming. So lockdown is impossible in those places. And so that loss of control can feel very stark somewhere like that. Perhaps we just need to talk to someone in the UK who's been through our asylum and immigration system. If we want to learn about what it is to have no control, to wait for other people to decide your future, then those people will be able to tell you some good stories, I'm sure. But Jesus came to Israel at that point and that time in history when there's great poverty, when there's great difficulty, because he wanted to change the pace. He wanted to begin something new. He wanted to start his brand new kingdom. And by kingdom, and we're going to talk about this a bit over the next few weeks, we mean Jesus' way of doing things. Okay, His rule, his reign, it's his kingdom with him as the king. So him being in charge, that is what it means to be in God's kingdom. And so this summer, just over August, we're going to do a brief series called Kingdom Come. And as we look at Jesus' kingdom, we will see that it was always advancing, that actually it's never been paused. And Jesus uh, taught in a synagogue in uh, Nazareth in Luke 4, and he read from Isaiah 61. And we're going to kind of work our way line by line through this passage of Isaiah 61 over August. Uh, And as Jesus taught that, and then he um, kind of had conversation with them in that synagogue, and then they attempted to throw him off a cliff, and then Jesus walked through the crowds and away, because what he said was so controversial. That was the very beginning of his ministry, as Luke tells the story. Jesus teaching in synagogues. And so we get to this passage and we'll read it now in Luke 4, 17 to 21. So if you've got your Bibles, just uh, open up with me at this point and let's have a look. It says, Luke 4, 17 to 21, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. This is Jesus in that synagogue in Nazareth. They hand him the scroll. He unrolled the scroll, found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Incidentally, that's like a New Testament mic drop. Roll up the parchment, back to the attendant, sit down. And all of the eyes of the synagogue were fixed on him. I bet they were. And he began to say to them, today... This scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And then there is conversation. Then they try and throw him off a cliff. Okay, so that's how that went. So it's a very revolutionary statement where Jesus claims a position for himself. He's turning up there and saying, this is who I am. Okay, and he reads from Isaiah, so Isaiah 61. Uh, and it's a passage about the suffering servant. And this suffering servant is um, something that Isaiah used. He painted this picture of this person uh, through a numbers of chapters of, of Isaiah that is called the suffering servant. And this servant has this kind of Messiah feel to him. A, a, the sense that he is a saviour. He is a redeemer. He will restore all of creation. That is the picture that is painted by Isaiah of this person. It's very prophetic And Jesus turns up there in Nazareth, probably six, seven hundred years after Isaiah has been written and says, this is me. Okay, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Effectively, here I am. Very powerful, incredible statement. He's not saying, look, I'm not just a good person. I'm not just a wise teacher, not just a prophet. Actually, I'm the savior. I'm the one you've been waiting for. I am the king of all creation. So we're going to work our way through this bit by bit over the summer. You're going to hear from me uh, again next week. Sorry about that. You'll hear from Charles Kachitza. You'll hear from Tim McMaster and Lizzie Basford as well. And we're just going to think about what it is about the kingdom coming and how that works for us today. And the first line is what we're going to look at today. This first line that Jesus read from Isaiah 61, where he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So simply, we're thinking about the presence of God. We're thinking about anointing first. And it's a powerful moment because the kingdom begins. And the kingdom begins with the anointing of a king. 
that's what happens. Or a queen in our case, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, she was anointed with oil at her coronation. And it's a statement about the beginning of a rule, isn't it? And reign and some authority. Now, our kings and queens in the UK don't quite have the authority that the kings of Israel had. Um, but you kind of get the picture. They were anointed with oil. And actually, the king of Israel, they would have been anointed with oil too. But Jesus is anointed with the Spirit of God. And there's a wonderful sense of pace and drama, actually, as you read what Luke writes. And I encourage you, go and read in the first four or five chapters of Luke. You just get this sense of pace, of something dramatic that's about to happen. Now imagine actually being sat in the synagogue at that moment. Okay, just you've gone in for the teaching that you're there that day. Jesus is reading from the scroll, claiming to be this saviour claiming to be the redeemer of Israel and when you're sat there watching that listening to this you must have thought gosh the world is changing very quickly around me so much is happening at the moment what what is going on there's a real sense of pace that Luke is trying to get us to to feel um, and but before this pace really goes before Jesus goes out to the countryside heals the sick confronts demons uh, casts cast them out and raises people from the dead before he feeds thousands and thousands of people before he walks across water before he begins to confront the religious uh, snobbery that there was in the nation at that time as he works his way to Jerusalem ultimately to his death and then his resurrection before he does all of that there is anointing when John uh, John the Baptist baptized Jesus the spirit of the God descends on Jesus comes down and says like a dove and came and rested on him and a voice from heaven calls out and said this is my son I'm well pleased with him this is the son of God so this new kingdom being started before them maybe they were thinking oh it's a, a, a new king to physically overthrow Herod or whoever is in charge at this point perhaps that's what we're looking at uh, actually it's a bit different it is the son of God starting his new kingdom being anointed as king and actually as we look through the new testament particularly in acts we'll see that anointing is often the beginning of something anointing with the spirit is the beginning of something so think about acts one and two okay and actually written by luke as well so we can see some narrative here luke is starting with some anointing in uh, his gospel luke and then in acts which he also wrote uh, wrote there is some anointing there too so acts one and two um i love to read these two together actually I, I know i've just told you to read the first four chapters of luke but the day after you can read the first few chapters uh, of acts and actually just as you read acts one and two think how does the church change from acts one to acts two i've taught on this before but uh, the difference between an acts one church and the acts two church they're almost two completely different churches it's fascinating to watch how this works so in acts one they are actually obedient jesus tells them to wait um, he says that the holy spirit's going to come you just wait in jerusalem and they're like don't know what that means but okay we'll wait that's what they do and actually while they're waiting they kind of get a bit organized they replace judas uh, as one of the 12 disciples uh, they organize their meetings peter seems to come forward as some sort of leader there so they get a bit organized there in that as well a bit of leadership in place but there seems to be no life there seems to be no power there there's no real movement it's actually quite a static picture isn't it of them just waiting just being sat then acts 2 holy spirit comes down amazing story fascinating story uh, where they the, they see the fire of god drop on them as they wait in this room uh, and then in that moment everything changes that meeting kind of explodes this people group you almost see them explode out the door down the stairs into the street peter preaches thousands of people in jerusalem become followers of jesus in this city that actually has just killed jesus thousands of them become followers of him and then as we go through acts you see healing and generosity then eventually the church spreading into europe and into asia uh, we see just a move of god comes from this moment anointing by the spirit comes before the advance of the kingdom or perhaps you want to think about acts 4 they're in a prayer meeting they're calling on God because they've come up against the religious authorities who are trying to silence them, who are trying to kind of hold them back to stop this new group of people, this new church uh, kind of exploding into life. Uh, and they pray in this meeting and the Holy Spirit falls on them again and there is increase in their boldness. 
Or perhaps we want to think about Acts 6, where again they're praying uh, for the Holy Spirit to fall on some new leaders. They're appointing new leaders uh, to get themselves more organized, actually, uh, in this church, to be able to look after the poor, to be able to serve people, uh, to grow the church, to release more gifting, to release more mission. They pray the Holy Spirit falls on them. Or maybe we want to think about Acts 8 and 10 where um, Philip has been in Acts 8 particularly, uh, preached the gospel, lots of people have got saved. Peter comes down, prays for him, Holy Spirit falls on them. Crowds of people who start following Jesus, suddenly the Spirit of God falls upon them. Anointing of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, is what happens first. Even when you think about it in terms of creation, in fact, the, the beginning of absolutely everything, think about it, beginning of Genesis, it starts with God's in his presence over the water, like the Spirit of God hovering and floating there. We start with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. So many years ago, or maybe about 14, 15 years ago actually, I was sat in a coffee shop in Birmingham. So we lived in Birmingham before we moved here. And I was sat in a coffee shop with a friend of mine. And I think my friend was a bit annoyed with me, actually. I think he was just fed up of me uh, talking about what might happen next and what I might do next, but just not getting anywhere. Uh, and he was sitting talking to me and said, Tim, just where do you want to go? What, what do you want to do? Where do you feel like God's taking you to? And uh, we sat there and I'd never spoke this out loud before. I'm not sure I'd even told Vicky. This is terrible, isn't it? But he asked me this and I said, look, I have this weird thing about Manchester. And I remember saying it, sat in a Starbucks in the centre of Birmingham, and knowing at that moment that the Holy Spirit was there. And that doesn't happen often to me. I think that's my only Starbucks experience of the Holy Spirit. It's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen too often to me. Um, but it did in that moment. And I just, we both sensed it. Oh, okay, God just turned up. I spoke out the words and God's presence was there in that. And then after that, we had, or I had four different dreams about moving to Manchester. And really over that time, a very deep sense of the presence of God's with me. I remember walking home from work one day, and not even really praying much. And suddenly the Holy Spirit was on me. I remember it happening when I was driving the car. All of these sorts, sorts of times, these things uh, kicked off. And, and I had a real sense of God's presence with me, really to get us to Manchester. It was the beginning of something. Now, I'm not trying to create formula here, okay? We're not, not, it's not what we're about. But we must see that the presence of God in his Holy Spirit is an initiator, gets things moving. Again, this isn't about passivity. Sometimes we can, we can read opposites in and take that as the teaching. This isn't, therefore, we need to be passive and not do anything. Actually, I don't believe that at all. Uh, but I think we must see that part of God's kingdom, um, it moves by his power, not our power. Uh, and that's what really we want to talk about. As we go through this Isaiah 61 passage, this piece of teaching, we must realise it's about his power, not our power. So over the next few weeks, we'll look at how God proclaims good news to the captives, how there is liberty for them, how we are to pray for the sick, how we are living in the favour of God as well. And all of these things are fruitless to attempt without saying that God's power is on us, without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We see God's kingdom move forwards and we follow his lead because of that. So what now? Just to draw this to a close, what, what, what now? Well, Jesus was anointed with king, he, as king. He was also taught us to receive the spirit as well. Didn't he? That was clearly part of his teaching. Well, how do we do that? Well, you might think, OK, Tim, this is knucklehead stuff. I know this. This is the basics. Uh, but actually, we are at a point in time and a point in history where we need to take the opportunity. And we can let this pass us by, actually. We can be paused and just wait for the world to happen to us and then just kind of attempt to carry on like it never happened. We could do that or we could cry out. We could cry out and say, actually, God, what are you doing? Where is your kingdom going at the moment? How do we get to be part of that advancing kingdom? How do we pray as Jesus taught us, Lord, would your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And I don't think that comes with a bracket once lockdown is over. I think it's, Lord, how do we find your kingdom? How is it on earth as it is in heaven? The anointing of the Holy Spirit is life changing. And actually, it's more than that. It's more than just changing our lives. Actually, it's to change the world around us as well. 
And Jesus taught actually in John, he, he says, look, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed him were to receive. And that's the time we live in. We live in the time of when we believe in Jesus, we receive his spirit. And out of that flows out of us. And so it changes us and it changes the world around us. So we have to think about that for now. Thirsty people cry out, God, what are you doing? Lord God, we need you. And I'm thirsty, actually, for Jesus to move in our city, for his living water, actually, to bring refreshment, to bring life to us. And Christchurch Manchester, we, we actually, we need to keep this real simple. We need God to move, don't we? We need that fresh living water. We need to see the anointing of him on us so that this kingdom of his will move forward in our city. I believe that for our city, for Manchester, for Gorton, for Denton, for Openshaw, for Hyde, Ashton, Mosley, for Fallowfield as well, for Ladybarn, for Burnage, for the city centre. We need to see the kingdom of God move forward and then go with it as it does. We also, I'm praying about the cities of Europe. I've been uh, in contact with a church in Krakow quite a bit recently uh, and I hope to go see them again this year. Um, but we need to see this kingdom of God move forward in those cities as well, the European cities. We need to see uh, people filled with his spirit, anointed with this power, and then that to flow out of them. I believe that is our call. That is what we're to see happen. And we're going to pray that that would happen. So just to finish now, let's pray. And would you pray with me? And we're going to pray that actually we see the Holy Spirit move. Now, this is a, a recorded sermon. Yeah, if you've noticed that, this is being recorded. And so I've spoken this a week ago. And now you're sat in front of me listening to it. But actually, I'm not sure God's too worried about that. So we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit moves upon you, even as you're sat in your house. Maybe you're sat with some other people. Maybe you're sat on your own. Maybe you're watching this on your phone, whatever it might be. Just don't look at anything else. Turn off Facebook. Don't turn off the TV if you're watching football behind you. Whatever it is, just let's for a moment. OK, let's just pray. Lord God, would you anoint, Lord, like your son was anointed Lord, as his kingdom move forwards, we believe that our call is to be participants in that kingdom, that we are part of it as well, that actually your Holy Spirit is to be poured out on us too. So, Father, would you pour out your spirit on us? Lord, for those maybe who've experienced that before, Lord, would they experience your refreshment again? Lord, for those perhaps who have never had any sense of that, Lord, would they call out to you and Lord, would you meet with them? Lord God, for anyone who's uh, watching this and, and maybe thinking, actually, I'm not sure I really know who Jesus is. I don't know this person. I don't know him as saviour, as Lord, as king of all creation. Lord, would you encourage them to cry out to you? Why not do that? Just in your heart saying, Lord God, Lord Jesus, you are my king. I want to be part of your kingdom. Lord Jesus, would you do something powerful in our city? Would we not be paused, Lord God? We'll be, be looking for you. Amen. to
whisper to assure me I found thee thou art mine I never heard a sweeter voice It made my aching heart rejoice Oh, oh, the love that sold me Rescue me Now darkness has no hold on me Your love and mercy set me free And with this new life I live to see your kingdom come Give me grace In my failures day to day Give me focus Don't let this passion fade away Oh your kingdom come your as it is in heaven, in heaven, let your glory reign throughout the earth. Every tongue confess that you are God. Every tongue confess that you are God. I want to see your kingdom grow. And broken lives to be made whole Let blind eyes see the glory of your mystery So fill me up and send me out so you flow from me to end the drought Your light in me for all to see It's for your name Give me grace In my face day to day Give me focus don't let this passion fade away, I need your power I am weak but you are strong, make me bold Send me, I will go, oh your kingdom come Your will be done as it is in heaven, in heaven Let your glory reign through Every tongue confess that you are God Every tongue confess that you are God Give me grace In my failures day to day Give me focus Don't let this passion fade away I need your power I am weak, but you are strong, make me bold Send me, I will go, give me grace 
In my failures day to day, give me focus Don't let this passion fade away, I need your power I am weak but you are strong, make me bold Send me, I will go As it is in heaven, in heaven Let your glory reign throughout the earth Every tongue confess that you are God Every tongue confess that you are God Okay, we're just going to finish now by just praying together. So we're, we're each going to pray about a few different things, maybe that I talked about today, but some other stuff as well. So a Abby, you're going to start us off. Indeed. Um, dear Lord Jesus, we thanks for th thank you for Dad's preach. <laughs> pray yeah. that um, we can all be blessed by your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit can work in our lives, Lord, through lockdown, out of lockdown, and with our families, in our families, Lord in our friendships and relationships, pray that um, mm. we can be strong in your Holy Spirit, no matter what life throws at us. Amen. Amen. Um, dear Lord Jesus, I pray for the Oasis Centre, that we are able to move in that nice big space soon, mm. and that we are able to go to church soon, and that lockdown will end. And we pray that the Holy Spirit is moved into the Oasis Centre and spread around the building. Um, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, we pray that you would move in our lives, you would move in our city, you would move in the cities of Europe, Lord. And we we ask that you would do something dramatic where your Holy Spirit turns up and begins stuff, Lord. I pray that you would begin stuff in our lives, like Abby talked about and prayed about there, and in uh, Gorton in the Oasis Centre as well. And we pray in Manchester too, we would see many people whose lives are changed and turned around by um, your powerful uh, work, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to finish there. So thanks uh, very much for being with us today and um, for Church, Christ Church Manchester. I hope you're all doing well and we hope we can all see you soon. What do you say, girls? Bye. See ya. <laughs>